All right, here is our vlog. Let's top pause this. Um, road trip vlog. Coming to the end of the road trip, and I have an update to give you all about how it went, pretty much. Um, in case you're wondering what I was watching, it was Daily V. That's Gary V's daily vlog. He got to 578, and that's uh, sort of the inspiration for these. This. Let's get away from some of the backlighting. I'll go um, sit on the uh, uh, this, the, f the air mattress in the room. So I want to say the uh, the vlog, not the vlog. The road trip was a pretty much a success. Um, I wanted to come up here to do get some work done, which sounds weird, and I'm going to explain that. People don't usually go on vacation to get work done, but um, get some work done and to hopefully reconnect with some old friends because. I'm in the place where I grew up, uh, at least in my high school years, because uh, I moved a lot. So, um, I didn't think, we'll start with the friends. I didn't think I would actually meet up with too many people. I, I, I almost um, was expecting to just meet up with Nick, the guy who I'm staying with, and that's it. But... Um, that's not what ended up happening. Um, I think on Thursday, I decided to drive around town, buy some Pepsi, and um, I should try and get a Pepsi sponsorship. That'll be a goal. Get a Pepsi sponsorship. <laughs> nah, maybe I, I'll probably end up saying something too controversial. Um, but I was driving around, and I saw somebody I knew. Um... Actually, they also have a YouTube channel. They're uploading, um, like, video game stuff. Uh, they don't yet have a capture card. However, if you go and support their channel, maybe they'll be able to make enough of that ad revenue that they can get themselves a capture card. Right now, they literally have a webcam in front of their television. And um, that sounds like a bad model, but here's the thing. In the early stages of a new project, a new endeavor, a new business. Maybe not a new business, the, the, the stakes are a little higher there, but in, in a new project, the first like year or two, or even three or four, are all about you. And I don't mean that in a selfish way, I mean that in a learning way. It's more about you developing to the point where people actually wanna watch your content and responding to the um, the feedback of early adopters, that is, uh, early people to your channel, than it is about the actual content you're putting out. So, if his recording quit, I mean, the poor guy was recording at like 10 frames per second or something. It was, it was, um, it wasn't good. So what I did was, I donated to him my webcam. Which means I need to buy a new one, because now I don't have one. If I want to record things on my uh, computer, <laughs> that's going to have to be done via um, the phone first. Which, I wonder if I can use a phone as a webcam. I would be very interested in doing that, because not this camera, but the front camera on this can record up to 4K. Um, if anybody saw, I, I'm pretty sure I made my announcement in 4K. Not sure if YouTube... Um, uploaded it that way, but um, the file, the original file is 4K. So, that's cool. Um, if I could figure out how to use this phone as a webcam, uh, I would be extremely happy. But, back to friends. So I met, he was walking to the store. So I gave him a ride, and then we hung out at his place. Um, and then, yesterday, he hung out over here at uh, my friend's place. So, his channel is... Um, Darwin Braveheart. I will put a link in the description. Um, I encourage you to go check out his content. You're going to see that it is very... It's, he's a very... He's very new at YouTube. Um, but I think... Be an early adopter. Subscribe and then check out his channel every once in a while. And then I think in like four or five years... You gotta play the long game with me. In four or five years, he'll probably have a great channel. 
tons of viewers, and maybe he'll be on on in streaming, and hopefully he has a capture card by then. But I do expect that even though he's going to be uh, recording using a 720p webcam faced to a television screen, I honestly think uh, he'll get some decent, half decent content out of that. The other thing is last night after it was it was almost fortuitous that I decided to bring him over here instead of hanging to, out at his place because when I went to drop him off at around the time where um, the friend I'm staying with uh, basically he had work the next day so we had to get everybody to the house um, so as I was heading out one of my other friends was heading in because he lives in this apartment. And I was like, oh, hey. Uh, he, he was a really, really f close friend. And we don't really talk so much because um, it happens with, uh, with men where you just don't talk to your friends. And then you come back in like three years and um, continue where you left off pretty much. <laughs> um, not sure if that's the same for uh, women. But for some male uh, in relationships, it's like that. So, mm, we caught up briefly, um, I dropped off my friend, and then um, I went over to his place, which is downstairs, and we talked for like two hours. It was him and another friend from high school. It looks like they're, uh, they're uh, sharing the apartment, they're roommates. Uh, they each got their own room, so it's a pretty good setup. Um, so yeah, that, that was a great success on the friends end. Now let's talk about the business end of things. Why would you travel to where all your friends, or your high school friends live in order to write and be productive? Well, the answer, my answer is twofold. First, it's kind of like a writing retreat because I know I'm not gonna have a lot of distractions because my friend is working. So during the day, I try and get stuff done and at, uh, in the afternoon when he comes home, uh, we hang out and we watch movies. Uh, I watched Fight Club, I made a video about that. I'm definitely going to make a full video on that. Um, I'm, I might even read the book um, because I know Fight Club isn't like the epitome of high art, right? In fact, it was it was written to be a pulp fiction, like just another book you find at the airport. And here's the things about books you find at the airport or um, in the in the drugstore or the or the you know the grocery store with the magazines. Um, they have to be good enough, right? Uh, Michael Crichton was sold at airports, and I love Michael Crichton. Um, we're talking Jurassic Park, uh, Timeline, Congo, Sphere. Th that's the stuff I grew up reading. I know some people grew up reading, like, YA and stuff, but I, I, I literally skipped from ch uh, children's fiction to just full adult fiction um, in the form of Michael Crichton and Discworld, but... I'm not here to talk about my reading preferences. I don't... Why did I bring that up? Oh, Fight Club. Yeah, so Fight Club... Fight Club... Um, it is unique enough that it made a mark on the world. When people say rule one of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club, we, we get that. Even if you've never seen the film, like I knew that you don't talk about Fight Club. And uh, so I'm going to get in trouble with uh, Durden, I think. I think for uh, making that previous video and then making the whole video where I am going to... You can hear the AC out here, so I'm going to go back into the room. Um, I am going to make a video uh, uh, analyzing it, psychoanalyzing it, um, doing applying some of that Jungian depth psychology because I think that Durden, the, uh, the friend, is is a Jungian shadow. I honestly believe that. And Carl Jung says you want to integrate your shadow. You want to recognize it, identify it, and integrate that that ability, the, all, all those things that are 
either on the edge or considered negative or even illegal in society, your capacity to do those things in the situations where they are needed, that's your sh that's that's the benefit of integrating your shadow. And I think I'm almost certain at the end of the movie that he doesn't destroy his shadow, he integrates it. He didn't shut like they could have ended the movie anywhere, right? But they ended it he didn't shut down the shadow. He saved one building and he let the other buildings fall. They could have rearranged the film so that the buildings didn't fall, but they didn't. And I think that's because he's still got Durden. He's still got his shadow and it's integrated. And here's the thing. Women love a man that has integrated his shadow. Um, we're going to reference Jordan Peterson for this because I... He's the only one I know of who's talked about it. But it's fairly obvious that one of the arcs for the female narrative, uh, when you read fiction that women read, that's fiction directed to women or fiction that women just end up liking. I'm talking about things like um, Twilight, but more archetypally, Beauty and the Beast. Um... Women like a man who is a bit of a beast, and then she can help tame that beast. Now, Jordan Peterson claims that that's the female hero's journey, but I I think that's selling women a little bit short. That women's hero's journey revolves around another person? No, no. The hero's journey is an individual journey. I, I don't accept that that's the hero's journey, but I do accept that that is a female arc that's very important. Okay. So what did I get done? Well, I edited the portfolio further. Um, I shipped off a copy, that copy, to uh, my family and a friend who has uh, graciously decided to help me proofread it. Thanks. Um, so that's good. Um, I still haven't looked at my po poetry anthology. But I've created a file for the Soul and Prince Novella 1, which is going to be one of my other publications. Um, the portfolio, I really want to do that as soon as possible. I'm thinking like next week. Basically when I get everybody's feedback back, um, I will take that into account, fix it up, and then send it out. Um, I have been opening it up every day and looking at it and changing things. Um, I'm trying to write The Soul in Prince, but it's going really slow. I don't know what it is, but I, I usually am able to write a scene, or I used to be able to write like a chapter or two, right? A chapter and a half, basically, on half. And then um, I was only able to write a scene, which is like half a chapter, and now I can write like half a scene, and it's frustrating. I'm like, why is it so difficult to just write? And I think it is because I'm traveling. Traveling is a very stressful event for me, um, especially traveling to a new place. So I think I should be able to get back into gear when I go back to uh, my the room I'm the place I'm uh, renting, uh, my university place. I hope I will definitely update you on that. The other thing is this thin mattress that I um, that I got from Walmart here. Um, I cannot use it. Um, it. I've been using it this whole week. I brought it up because it's small, right? It's hurting my back. So at least I know that the uh, the Oki mattress is better. Um, but it's still not great. And I think hybrid mattresses need a little more of a professional... Sorry, not a professional, but a premium touch. Oki is definitely a professional company. We're coming to the end of this video, and I just want to say, um, I have been writing a bit, not as much as I want to do. I finished reading a novel, um, I talked a lot, bounced some ideas off my friend, I have some ideas for how to plan, I did a little bit of programming, I made a program in C++ that can create a window and that's it. Met up with friends, and um, the big thing is, this is like a reset for me, so when I go back home I should be able to hit the ground running, or start the race in second gear. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, please find me on Twitter, and uh, see you later.